What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with a man who is truly an amazing human being. And that would be Brooks Braun. Brooks, how are you, brother? Excellent. Thanks for having me, Jay. It's awesome to have you. So uh, Brooks came to me by the way of another good friend. Uh, who was like, bro, you have to meet this dude. He is a real living renaissance man. Those were his words, not mine. And him and I have been talking via WhatsApp because he is in a undisclosed location around the world, as many of the people that I podcast with these days are. Uh, and we obviously do that for specific reasons. Uh, but Brooks is an unbelievably advanced soul. Uh, he has a level of quantum consciousness uh, unlike most people that I speak to. And that is a huge comment coming from me because I talk to a lot of advanced people. So, you know, his his introduction is not uh, relevant to what we're going to discuss today, but he is bridging spiritual precepts and quantum perspectives for Western minds. But again, he is a very accomplished man, uh, which we're not talking about today, but uh, he's on the Jay Campbell podcast for a very specific reason. So let me just ask you, uh, today is May 23rd for a demarcation statement, uh, 2022, as you know, and again, you and I talk all the time on WhatsApp. Um, we are in strange and interesting times. We are, if, a, if you're a little bit more scarce, you could say, wow, we're on the brink of the end of this age. So, you know, from your perspective right now, where is humanity going the next three to five to 10 years? Wow. Where are we going? We have a big challenge. We're, this is a traditional transitional phase we're in since probably the last 10 years now. Right. We're moving through a different band of frequency. So you can probably notice in your encounters with people, even people that were, let's say, more grounded, more basic working people are coming up with questions um, that are more profound. Like, I'm, I'm starting to wonder why I'm here and what I should really be doing. And they're typically out of context for the individual. To me, that's the kind of the evidence that there's a waking up. Mm -hmm. And there's also a division because there's people that want to cling to the past. Right. And this, right. Is the, this is the challenge. I mean, where we're going as a race, we have huge potential. Where we're going to get to. We don't know. We don't know how many people are going to embrace the reality that it will never be the same. Life will not yeah. be the same. You know, you're, you're, your kid's a cute little baby and all of a sudden she's wanting the car keys. You know, it's happened and all of a sudden the person wakes up and goes, I can't believe we're here. How did that happen? How did it go so fast? So um, I think now is a very epic time to be alive. Yeah. And, and it's really providing us a lot of evidence to understand where people's attention really is. Yeah. Right. And we're this, get is, to that. right. this is going to rule, like you say, where are we yeah. going? This is a war on the psyche of mankind right now. This is right. really what it is. Right. So 
are they going to snap out of this and be responsible and take on the higher virtues of their being? Or are they going to cling to the old ways, want to go into the past? And that's really that's really the question. How are they yeah, going to respond? That's a beautiful way to put it. So I'm going to put a gun to your head, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, and say, are you long or short humanity right now? <laughs> that's <it's> awesome. <laughs> I am long, I'm long for the, for the belief that it doesn't take that many people to become aligned with a single-minded intention right now to change this. That's right. Even, even though the numbers are probably 80 to 20, 80% right. are in a sleepwalking right. trance and 20% right. are, let's say a, a good portion of those are waking up and going, I wonder, and there's a smaller portion that really have a clear idea of what this agenda really is that's been evolving for the last thousand years not the last two so right. what we need to do is as a responsible being is to unify with the right people of like-mindedness and that work really is going to happen on the inner it's not that's because exactly. exactly so if if you are responsible you don't worry about the let's say the odds look bad you, you don't get stuck in because no. this this is the magic show is the propagation of the fear. So it creates a unified field of fear and it's dominating right. this planet to break through that takes a lot of inertia and ambition and two things that most people are lacking. You would know that be the commitment, and the dis discipline to fulfill the goal of of moving forward in life. Now, beautiful. Are, right. Are they going to do that? It's only up to us. And it's having these kind of open conversations about it. And it's going inside and doing the work consistently and knowing that you become the light and you'll attract those souls and you're going to be the antivirus. You know, you're going to collect the states of consciousness in line with this, this mission statement that we're making right here. And they're on the other side, trying to break that down. So that's the war. Uh, I love talking to you, man. We could talk all day and go so many different directions with this. Um, you know, so you gave me a bunch of talking points, but I mean, we're going to go wherever this goes. I mean, you know, you said they, and as I told you, and you do this, you know, we have to be very careful. <laughs> we have to be right. very careful right now because unfortunately we don't have freedom of speech. You know, all of these comms are monitored and suppressed and censored and shadow banned. And obviously, you know, we have to navigate and maneuver in ways that allow us to speak freely amongst each other right now. Uh, but at the same time, there's certain things that we can't say, but like, you know, it's an opinion question and you and I are pretty advanced beings consciously and we thought deeply and reflected and meditated and introspect, you know, become introspective and contemplative on this. But like, what do you think the parasitic side of, you know, this energy war is like, are they interdimensional beings? Are they, you know, demonic, you know, reptilian shapeshifters that Hollywood shows us? I mean, like, are they all of the above? Like in your opinion, like what do you think that this quote unquote, the, the side that is designed to keep humanity oppressed and suppressed and consciously burdened? What are they? Okay. Let's let me, let me have a quantum perspective on this sure. to keep this in, in the safe zone, in the right end mm -hmm. zone. Um, in the, at essence, we are all light and energy. Correct? Right. That's right. Okay, so regardless of the being or the dimensional uh, at location of that individual or being or entity or whatever yeah. person wants to label that as, at sure. essence, they are a collective of of energy right. or conscious or consciousness. Now they have free will and they can choose to operate in the light or the dark. Mm -hmm. That's the free will we're all granted with on all dimensions and planes. We're allowed mm -hmm. to make that determination for ourselves as soul. Um, so if that's really how we we can boil this down to a fundamental um, starting point, there's always going to be these polarities in, in our dimension. We live in a world of duality in third dimension, positive, right. negative, and a neutral. So there's three right. currents. Right. That's how we learn. We learn by contraction and expansion. We learn by pain and suffering and joy and relief. So that's necessary for our growth, spiritual growth. So our, our experiences are there to hone our spirit. So we look at this place as a, 
as an education center, a school of some sort, let's say, and we can start to shift our attention from being a victim to being responsible to say that whatever happens to me is is a reflection of, of my inner thinking, feeling, beliefs, and actions. And if we look at it from that way, then whatever comes at us, we swallow that pill of truth and say, that's mine. That's mine. Good and bad. That's mine. And you become conscious and awake of the relationship between spirit, the awareness of consciousness, and the action external in this dimension for us. So whatever, whether it's an individual person you know here or in another dimension on the inner at some point that collective is the same thing it's consciousness and it's going to be dark or it's going to be light and you because of free will choose to be afraid of that to embrace it to activate it and send it back to love and the light how do you want to respond to that i would say that's the test regardless of what dimension and what being and right. what gender. Right. And there's a multitude, of course, I agree. There's, it just goes on and on and on. But I think at some level, that's part of the distraction of the fear mechanism. This mind virus that we've been attacked right. with this yeah. symbolic of this virus thing. It's a mind right. virus to, to get you distracted from your true divinity. Really? I mean, bro, it's beautifully what you said. I mean, I, you know, I like to say that, vibration is all right so your vibration while you're living in this physical body is you know ultimately determining whom you serve you know like you said you either serve the light or you serve the darkness exactly and exactly 80 percent of people are right now due to the last two and a half years but you said it even better it's gone on for thousands of years it's just been pronounced for the last two and a half years with the bullshit c and the bullshit v and the fear and the masking and all the nonsense it essentially was kind of the line in the sand or the line of demarcation to drive people into resonance or dissonance. Exactly. And the great majority, yeah, the great majority is in dissonance, which as you said, is fear, you know, total fear propagation. Everything is fear. I mean, you know this better than me. You go outside now and you see people like us and they're happy and life is going on is perfect. And then you see the people who have two masks and a face shield on in the bright sun and you're like that person is consciously captured that person isn't conscious that person is so entrained with fear mind programming or mind control or indoctrination that they can't even think straight because who in their right mind is wearing two masks and a face shield in the bright blue sunlight in their car <laughs> by themselves I mean, yes yeah, by themselves so you, right so i mean you're right so i mean it's like it really does come down to whom do you serve while you're in a physical body, right? Like while you're in this physical body, it is an inner job. You have to work on your quote unquote, uh, you know, inner work from a standpoint of like getting in touch with the stillness of your higher self. But at the same time, it's like you can still serve humanity, you know, or creation or however you want to call it at your highest and best capacity without attachment or expectation. I mean, it, it really does come down to that. And I feel, and I, I'm interested in your take on this. I personally feel, and again, it's my opinion, but I feel like every decision where we're at now from a vibrational field of energy and frequency of planet earth right now, they we've chosen, we've essentially decided, you know, sovereign empowered or free and free, which I would call is the pro human element. And then the, you know, uh, disempowered, fear-based, everything is external, which is the transhumanist side. And I know we're going to talk about AI and all that, but is, is that kind of how you see the, the playing field now? It's just either one, one or the other? Yes. And I think if we understand that at a rudimentary level and then fast forward right to the solution, what do we do about that? Because we know this is a multi-layered cake of right. clusterfuckness is what yeah. it is. Yeah. So it's a shit it, it, show, a, a, it, a flaming it, dumpster fire of shit show. Exactly. And there's a no end to how layered this is in, in the darkness. It just yeah. doesn't end. You can spiral down to analyze. It's kind of looking at your people's health, right? It's, it's multi-dimensional problems. It's not like, oh, I only got a pain. I got a pain in my side. No, you don't. You got, this is my sciatica. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, where do we put our attention? Because the, the drawing card is always to draw us back into the 
subject matter. It's a, it's, this is so obvious, a distraction technique. Yes. And we can see the construct is the symbolism of, first of all, when you understand what this physical body is, and then the bo other subtle bodies that it has around it, and you understand how it operates and how they're the interface for the universal intelligence or this field or whatever you'd right. like to call that. Right. And you separate souls by two meters apart, which is the, I mean, if that isn't a clue, if you know that right. you have a, a field around you, you can go right. an auric field is the, all your subtle bodies that emanate a charge around you, a space around you. There's something within that field. That's your field. Right. Now, when you are light, and you create a different resonance within that field and you're coherent in a line, you attract because it's a law. It's a law of resonance. When you go out, people, you'll know that they'll come right up to you and sit down and right off the bat, they'll start up a conversation. And you're like, there it is. There it is again. Right? So the moss always attracted to the light and you'll see that. So the best way to break that is to tell people you can't stand closer than six feet apart. That's a good one. And then you there muffle you them up this way. You start layering on the, I mean, they're very three dimensional right. approaches to this, but that's the way you start. But the, the real, the real kicker is it is a mind virus. It's an attack on your mind through distraction, multi-layered levels right. of distraction, TikTok, right. staying away from people, focus on the fear, watching the news, bad news. First question is, if you want to amp, amp this up, how many times a day are you in quiet retreat? Exactly. And where where is your where's your AI? Where's your attention and your intention? Where are you putting no. it? Because that is what they're robbing your attention, and then you lose your whole volition and intention because you're in their collective fear bubble now, and you start reacting energetically to that because you're unaware of what they're doing. It's a beautiful magic show, and everyone's subscribing to the theater. Beautiful, bro. Like I can't. I mean, I <laughs> can't really say much. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, but I mean, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, we, 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 I, let me add, I mean, you know, the attack, as you said, is multi-layered. I mean, they don't need to send off a body of electorate, you know, young men for, for, for most purposes, or, you know, I know women are in the militaries now, but they don't need, as they, as you know, a hundred years ago, they would just send off, you know, the age of men that you needed to slaughter into worlds, you know, into wars, world wars, you know, fields of battle. And now, like you said, it's so multi-layered. They're enslaving us through the food, through the wireless 5G technologies and the electromagnetic frequencies. I mean, there is no end, as you said, to the ways that they can interfere with your soul, with the energy field of you know who you are because as you said earlier in the show and i love saying this like at the end of the day bro we are nothing more than consciousness itself that's what we are right and when you, bodies. that's right and when you understand there's an order to creation right the information is in the field it's like bruce lipton talked about it 30 right. 40 years ago didn't matter where he put the cell it would take its information from the environment and shift into that frequency right. so right. the quickest way to get this thing out of harmony is just to affect the field and how do you affect the field disrupt like i say disrupt the magnetic field around us because that's the information field you burn that out with wi-fi and programming some of them advertising through media block your voice online it just goes on like we say we're a multi-dimensional being so there's a multi-dimensional cluster bomb going off around us it's well constructed what they what they failed to master in the second world war they perfected exactly and on, on this particular one right like right. why do we get, we don't need to shoot bullets we don't right. need to that, that's yeah. old that'll story. never happen all these people they keep talking about how china's going to invade mexico or the usa or canada it's all nonsense they don't need to they invaded us with tiktok <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah look at this hey look at the supply chain North America is 70% dependent on almost all the food they eat from China. It's incredible, all the, dude. It's just really, when you look at it, it's like, that wasn't like an, an unconscious play. It was like right. all these guys that are in these positions, they're all knocking the same ring. They're in the same, you know, they're in the same club. So when you say this is their rock, it is. So if you want to 
if you want to understand that what you thought was a right was really a privilege, because it was, you're not in the United States of America um, country, you're in a corporation. And the chief, the CEO of that corporation is letting you know we're bankrupt and we're going to have to take on a right. new leader. And he's coming from the other side of the water. So, Unbelievable. you know, it's like, yeah. what do you want to do about how do you want to how do you want to play that? Do you want to stand up and revolt within because you're distracted by Ukraine and COVID and monkey butt virus or monkey whatever? They, whatever. <laughs> like how there's no shame to the end of their game. It, it's really like at one level it's childish. But it's epic because most people are childish and they can't even see it for what it is. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon. Bro, I mean, I want to, you know, you, we talked, you just met, we, we spoke about intention, the real AI attention versus intention, but to speak about AI just to identify it. And again, I know we have to be careful, but is that right now the true enemy? The digitalization of energy fields, meaning they really truly want at a soul level for people to consent, you know, cause a lot of people, they don't understand what the consent is coming. Well, I always say, and I don't have it right here. It's right in front of me. Cause I had it charging every time you pick one of these up, you consent. They don't even make you sign papers anymore. They say right. ink right here on the screen, ink here, ink here. Nobody reads it. Right. So we're constantly consenting to be manipulated and again, to become digitized. But is that really where this ultimately plays out? Because, you know, I had this conversation on Thursday with a brilliant young guy in uh, uh, down and, you know, 23 year old kid. And we, we really started talking about like, you know, are you ready as a sovereign empowered free human to say no to that? you know, to when they have the social credit systems and this bullshit and, you know, people like us get turned off. What is your backup plan? Right. So is it like, and again, this is an opinion question and I'm interested in yours, but like, do you see the cities becoming the metaverses and the people like us just fleeing those places and living in, let's say, you know, and I don't want to sound like a hippie, but maybe that's what we end up being communes of like free land where we're not using currency, we're not connected to the beast system or whatever you want to call it. We're not on the internet. We're literally back to like almost a rat, aboriginal lifestyles. Do you see that coming? Is that the reality of the next five to 10 years? Yeah, it's growing for sure. I mean, I know where I, where I am. I can see the influx. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a thousand percent up because they're running. They're running from that. They realize that, yeah, their sovereignty has gone and they, they were an illusion that we got, we got rights. We got a constitution. So, no, you don't. Corporation doesn't Never have had any rights, bro. Never had any yeah, rights. Remember when long. George Carlin, George Carlin told yeah. us about 30 years. Yeah, that's you have right, a right yeah. to get killed. Or no, he said, they have a right to kill you. Exactly. So that whole, that whole thing's gone. It wasn't, it wasn't there. It wasn't there in the beginning. That's it's why you see the steam, roll, steam rolling the position, right? The only way is to almost is that why isn't in the States? Here's a little thing that I observe many years ago. I was around brilliant minds and, and uh, say around money and movement of money yeah. and taxes and things like that. And I learned a little bit about flags. Like the law right. is most of the law is based off the law of the flag. It's behind exactly. the flag is the contract, the constitution right. behind the flag. So when you look at the position of the flag, the position of the flag is very important. If you notice in a movie, whether they have the flag, the flag has to That's be a very right. specific dimension to have jurisdiction right. and sovereignty. That's right. It has to be That's in a right. certain position on the flagpole, right? That's right. That's right. It has to be 90 to 45 degrees. If it's below 45 degrees, it means the flag is suspended, which right. means the contract is suspended, which means you are not sovereign. You've lost. You have been captured. And you see all of these American flags behind all the presidents in a vertical position. Yeah. 
That's right. And then you see all the other ones in the right position that had a gold fringe around them. Those are called right. bad. That's under admiralty laws. That's a military that's designation. So when you go to airports and you see all the flagpoles hanging down in a hang down position, what's the airport saying? There's no right to anybody in this land because it's no military freedom. jurisdiction. You have no right. You sit down, shut up. And that's kind of how they've kind of seduced people through this trickery. You know, it's gone on for hundreds of years of trickery and sleight of hand and lawmaking. It, and it, it actually went on in 1776. The, literally, the United States Constitution was, as you know, written by the uh, Vatican and then given to the King of England. And we became a sovereign, you know, not sovereign, but a, basically a, 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 a debtor slave to the monarchy in London, which was also yeah. under the rule of the crown, which was the Vatican. That's right. Well, so that's all you have is the Vatican, London, and DC. The DC, as you said, is the military arm of this, whatever you want to call them, the cabal, exactly. the Illuminati. They're the, the thugs. The they're, thugs. They're, they're, the, they're the thugs of of the Vatican, right? The administrative body of England. Right. Yeah, we'll handle the taxes and collect those, and and the Vatican sits the in the US back. Is the military? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Go send the send the goons out to go do all the dirty work, right? And there's a pride I mean, around. It's, it's a seduction because it's, there's a pride in it, a patriotic pride in it. And I understand it, but it's a tr it's true. It's black magic. You got people that magic. sacrifice their lives magic. for for a, they think a country and it's not. It's a corporation. Yeah, dude, I have a book. I'm looking for it uh, somewhere right here, right here. So this would be a great book for you. In fact, actually, I'll, when I see you, I'll bring it. I'll just give it to you because it's an amazing book. But this was put out by a pen name person named Peter. It's called Occupation of Planet Earth, a Liberation Manual. And this came out in April of 2021. And dude, this is chapter and verse of the U.S. as it was right. created. And this is written by a very brilliant legal, scholarly legal mind, clearly a lawyer, a constitutional lawyer at that. Mm -hmm. And he basically just lays it out and how the United States was, it's all a myth. Like you said, really? the United States has been a captured military arm of london the crown also then ruled by the vatican the the, the 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 flashpoint origin of the dark energy beings or whatever they are that you know whether they rule interdimensionally or you know ultra terrestrially or whatever they are from wherever they're ruling from is the vatican we know that underneath the vatican is where you know the headquarters of all of there is and it's also as you know uh brooks where they obfuscate everything like all of the antiquity uh you know ancient texts and valuable things are hidden they're course, just buried you have, you, there you have to hide the truth right because be right because you get exposed right. to it then you wake up right. a little bit and then you know that all i need to do is go inside the answer's inside yeah it is inside right. so you can't you, you blast people with distractions and fear yeah. so that they can't stop the monkey mind because right. the, the challenge on most people when I talk to them, right. even if right. they say, yeah, 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 I'm going to meditate. And they try, they, they, they just do it. It's like working out. Oh, I want to be like you. It's like, you think that's going to happen in six months? Like, seriously? You got a 90-day like, plan for that, bro? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sign up to my course. I'm going to make one for you. But uh, it's these things take <laughs> They it's take time, right. they take right. commitment it's and discipline, everything that people are lacking and they're suffering. I say that, the, you know, the evidence that your lifestyle is not working for you is that you're suffering and in pain. That's right. the direct evidence that it's right. not working. Whatever you say doesn't matter because the evidence right. is you're suffering. So obviously there's a disconnect energetically right. and resonantly and right. mentally and you're disconnected from your true source so you would be radiant and to be a radiant being full of joy and love and expression and fun and you'd be you'd be a shining guy but you're not so there's obviously a mathematical problem here right like if you don't like the answer it's you got to be self-responsible you got to be self-reliant and you got to do the work you got to right. You got to get busy. It's like school. You got to right. donate a couple hours a day to yourself, at least right. a couple hours a day. Speaking of school, and that's a whole nother podcast. I mean, you know, that is gone. That has now been completely contaminated. You can't even, you know, if you're a conscious, aware being, how can you in good conscience even consider sending your children off to these progressive mind virus, you know, 
indoctrination camps of what colleges and universities have become. They are not the college that you and I went to. They're not the university system. There is no democracy if there ever was one there, but there is no free independent thought. Everything now is indoctrination. I mean, it's dude, even at like the junior college and trade schools, there's a, yeah, they're there. Yeah. They're there now. Well, look at the word doctorate and then think of indoctrination. You're getting indoctrinated. And if you can recite the scripture that you learned, you get a doctorate. I mean, that's, that's what exactly it is. Right. If you go outside of that parameter, that's not within the, how fast does the doctorate disappear? You can do, disappear in a couple of weeks, right? Suspended, no ability to earn. And I, I mean, I'm from a different school. Maybe you are too. If anyone ever threatened me with that kind of stuff, I'm the first yeah. one to say, let me get a match. Right, right. Yeah, I'll burn it for you. Don't yeah. don't worry about it. I know I'm, I can create. I'm a creator. And I'll exactly. create something bigger and better. That's, 100%. That's what they don't want people to do. They're afraid right. of that. Like, my identity is gone then my money right. all the things you right. cling to are behind that so you don't want to right. sacrifice that so easy but the right people are like go ahead and take it you think you take right. my knowledge you don't take my knowledge <laughs> right you you actually liberated me awesome exactly i'm free to go exactly. do my own thing and say what i want now they, they need people inculcated into the system of you go to high school and then you go to an Ivy League college or a well, you know, an academic accredited institution. And then again, it's just more inculcation, more indoctrination, more what they want you to do. I mean, you think about this. We were literally at a sort of barbecue last night and very aware people. That's a whole other conversation too. Like, you know, where do you attention intention? Where do you sit with now? Who do you speak with? Like, where do you give your energy to? If you're out there willfully sitting amongst the bourgeois, what are you doing? But the conversation was, you know, about college and how it's done. It, it, it's completely flawed. Like anybody with a modicum of awareness now can look and see the bigger picture. And it's like, is this what we want, you know, for our eight, 12, 14 year old kids who, like you said, you know, are going to have to make a decision ultimately. And, you know, for me, you know, again, cause I have a 14 and 12 year old daughter, you know, I've already told them that I'm not paying for their college. Like I, they can do whatever they want when they're 18 or 19 years old. But like, I want them to build a business. You know, I want them to become a digital entrepreneur or, you know, build something, you know, whether it's widgets or it's, you know, information, but like, I want them to understand how to make a profit. I, like you said, I want them to be a creator. You know what I mean? And so it's like to be you know, free, free and sovereign and liberated exactly. and a free thinker and a creator and understand your, Hey, where you put your attention and intention is going to create your dimension. Right. What are you doing and where are you putting it? Most of the brilliant people in this planet, it wasn't because of the scholastic endeavors. No, no. They need, of course no. you need fundamental training. I'm not discrediting right. mathematics. Right. You need fundamentals. Science. But then after right. that, you need to be around people that are really thinking outside the Driven. box to, to yeah, they, you have to be challenged to think differently, not to recite and follow a formula all the time. It just doesn't work. It, dude. I mean, like, well, I mean, to use a, a case in point medicine, I mean, what kind of a sham is allopathic medicine with big pharma and Rockefeller foundational precepts? I mean, it is literally, you know, part and parcel part of the sham, part of the sham mockery, the, you know, the ruse that, you know, this is stuff where people are actually fundamentally, you know, seeking to treat the root cause of illness, whatever kind of illness it is. And you and I know, you know, if we start talking about energy again, you know, and I love saying this, but like, there is no disease that can happen to an energy being right? Like these physical bodies are our ambulatory vehicles to, you know, evolve and grow right. our souls and our consciousness. But like, you can't get COVID or cancer or heart disease or diabetes or dementia. If you are a sovereign resonant soul, you have to be traumatized, which then leads to, you know, physical inflammation, which creates degradation. And then the cellular degradation leads to disease. But all of that comes from an amputated spirit that there isn't you integrated there you exactly exactly that's it it does how many symptoms i mean a lot of people like they act like disease just landed in their lap <laughs> right you know what i mean i was just i got a friend of mine sitting there he's like i was just sitting there he said <laughs> my friend's dad i was just sitting there minding my own business and then all of a sudden heart attack. <laughs> it's like, 
It's like you didn't the cancer. Have, like, it just came up on me, Brooks. You didn't have like 10,000 symptoms, right? You didn't notice that getting up in the morning, you couldn't even function without pouring down frick three, three or four coffees. And it's like starting your car and putting your foot on the right pedal, holding it to right. the ground, turning the key over right. and going, oh, I don't know why my cars don't last so long. It's literally when you're in that trance and you're so disconnected, right. everything's a shocker. I don't know why I got sick. I don't. So, so you have to disconnect people. It's, it's, it's working. But for the people that wake up, they realize, no, you have to hold a certain mental thought. You have to ignore all the subtle signs because the subtle bodies communicate subtly. It's a whisper. It's a nudge. And if you got a monkey mind screaming at you, it needs to be sensorily pleased every 15 seconds on something different. You're never going to hear the whisper. That's the whole purpose of the contemplation is to stop the machinery, calm it down, slow the voices down, turn the volume down to start letting intelligence sift through you. Right. And you let right. that guide, let intuition guide you, which you you don't see much of people getting guided by their intuition because they don't know what it is anymore. If you say, how do you know where your intuition communicates to you? What it like to describe how you get communicated to through intuition what is that and they they don't know what that means so when i explain it they i get it'll communicate to you sphere inside look at like a right. circle and there's a voice a real small where does it talk over here or That's over right. here spatially there's a place where it'll talk and it'll be very specific in the way it communicates in sensations because it won't be right. an emotion no if you're having emotion you're in the wrong body Right. You're in the wrong right. sensorial body. It's much subtler, the intuition, than the emotion. It's a sense. It's not an emotion. So when they get the distinction and they start working with them, they go, wow, that is ever cool because I just thought about somebody. And then they showed up. I go, there's the confirmation that you're aligning yourself and you're paying attention. Just practice that more. Practice that more and turn the noise of the mind down. It's it's not a very good vehicle for for interfacing with with spirit. It doesn't work. Right. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the bandwidth to get up into the higher station. So you have to use the intuition. Right. Beautiful. I mean, that happened exactly this morning. I mean, my wife and I were coming back from the gym and we were in the car and I was talking about a good friend of mine uh, and how we were talking about something the other day and I was thought of him and I'm not kidding you comes in on my Bluetooth on my car as I mention his name. She looks at me, I look at him, and I'm like, that's, there, that's the universe. No exactly. coincidence. Pure synchronicities. We were both aligned at that frequency at that moment in time to conjoin the, you know, essentially to conjoin the multiverse, which really just leads me to something that we were going to talk about. Um, you have one of your points is virtues as a compass to great to greatness. And I want to make a comment about that. You know, very few people today. And again, I'm not picking on younger people. You know, you're a little older than I am. You're a little bit probably Gen X in that range. I'm Gen X, like in the early stage, but like, you know, the younger generations today, bro, as you know, are essentially conditioned to have a screen in their hands since birth. So their thinking is programmed that, you know, why do they need discernment or critical thinking skills when the answer is asked and given, right? Not that the answer is real or that it's, you know, made no. up, which is clearly now the obvious case with Google and everything, hiding things and getting rid of things and editing history and Wikipedia and all that bullshit. But the bottom line is very few people even understand what virtue is. No, if you said, uh, you're, you're, if you said to them, your feelings and your behaviors are based off your virtues. And right. what do you tell me, tell me your top 10 virtues? They would look at you like, could you give what? me a couple of examples? That's typically yeah, what exactly. they say to me. Can you, you have to give them a hundred percent. And it's, and it's okay. It's okay. But it's just evidence that they're not getting educated on. Those are important things, aren't they? You're, you're going to change your beliefs like underwear. I mean, if, depending on the situation environmentally, you'll sell a belief out in a heartbeat. If there's if the return or the pleasure is greater than the belief you hold, right? Like exactly I believe it. firmly in this, and someone comes by with a shiny, shiny, and say, like, "Well, you know what? We never have been getting along, have we? I gotta go now. There's a shiny over here. That happens all the time. So 
another distraction because why? Because they're not clear of their virtues and where they lie. So they make bad decisions because they're not really in alignment with their virtues. They don't even know what they are. So no, you got to say here is a, a virtue. Like let pick 10, honesty, integrity, compassion, gratitude, whatever you want and put them in order. What are they? And then from there, ask yourself when you're having a behavior, which virtue you operating from right now? Right. And then right. you'll get real clear that your decision-making process right there is highly flawed and you're going to pay the price for it as soul. That's your, you're going to pay the price. So when your life goes bad, don't look at it with, I say the unholy Trinity of shame, blame, and guilt. Like it wasn't my fault. Like I didn't do it because you right. have to deflect the energy of truth because it's uncomfortable and you don't like to be responsible for your actions. So you, you deflect it so you can temporarily feel okay. Yeah. And then that, you know, karmically, that lesson's coming back with a bigger punch next time. Hey, guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. Let's, let's unpack right. that. Let's, let's unpack that further though, because I keep thinking as you were saying that I was thinking of like, you know, the sports illustrated model, which I know you've seen in the last week as a giant fat person with folds of flesh hanging over, you know, the sports illustrated cover model is a fat woman with folds of flesh. And, you know, that's what they personify and glorify now is beauty. And again, you know, wh whatever culture or world or realm, and I'm not here to fat shame if anybody gets upset, but you and I know that when you look at like, you know, uh, classical architecture or sculpture or paintings that, you know, they've, they've been able to determine from all different human minds and cultures, like what encompasses beauty and, you know, amorphous, beings do not so it's like they're focusing on uh what's the word i want to use inverting truth now so you know to what you just said our children are literally told through tiktok through instagram through social media through snapchat through all of these channels and comms that accountability and personal responsibility and sovereignty is not their job. So they are literally told that it's not their fault, Brooks. They are literally given this bullshit idea that it's okay to be the victim. It's okay to play the blame, to, to play the blame game. Of course, because that's part of the agenda, right? You have to, you have to, that's, that's one of the moves. You have to do that, pull that piece of puzzle, that, that puzzle piece off the board and replace it with a new one. De the destruction of that of that mind through something very simple like you're not responsible don't worry <laughs> the, the, the borg will take care of you the borg right this what it really, literally is what it's coming to the borg will take care of you dude it's i literally say this to my 11 year old she's 12 now i i say this gabby it's your fault and then i shut up <laughs> and she looks at me like what do you mean? And, and, and it doesn't matter. Like I really am attempting to teach her that everything comes down to personal accountability and that as a being a sovereign, empowered, free human, it is your choice to become personally accountable. And these kids of today are literally cajoled, manipulated, you know, mind effed into thinking that it's not. And so they all, like you said, they all have a victim mindset. Now, not all of them, but the great majority have a victim mindset. And so how, as a parent, do you teach them that that's not true? I mean, you have to be hardcore. There, there is no other option. Now, my 14 year old, the opposite. She doesn't have that. And they're both getting the same schooling, the same parenting, the same, you know, education and spiritual discipline. Yeah. But one soul chooses to be a victim. And again, she's 12, right? She's got plenty of time to evolve and grow, but like yeah. the other one isn't. So it's like, 
why? You know, I mean, obviously we could ask the question, but the reality is, is that every being has a choice. Well, of course it has free will and creativity that separates us from animals and everything else. So she has a, I guess, I guess the solution would be to, to keep reframing it in a way to say, right. so what's your solution to right. remedying this challenge that you have? Cause you have a, cha you have a challenge. I don't have a challenge. Right. And I, I had that opportunity with my daughter's 41. So yeah. I have that opportunity to, yeah. to frame it in a certain context to say, you can do whatever you want. There's consequences. That's all. And I don't right. pay your bill. Right. It's right. okay. You can believe whatever you want. That's fine. When it goes south, just don't come to me. Right. And I think in society as a general, for me, that's my perspective is I don't ask anything from it, but don't come asking me for nothing. Right. I, it's real simple. Right. Like, I'll contribute right. out of free will and love and kindness and generosity. I've done lots of that work. My, my whole life has been fulfilled of volunteering my energy. So sure. I've got that discipline under wraps. So, but don't, when it goes south, don't come knocking on my door. Do so, do a little bit of personal work, and then and that's a a good thing to to uh, educate her with is the option. Like, think about your choice, make it, and just watch the results. Yep. And then they can start yep. to formulate whether or not it was a constructive decision or destructive decision. Right? Yeah. And, and look, there. You know, the, both of them are getting the same teachings. You know. Right. They have gratitude journals. They go out in the backyard oh, really? and they ground in nature. Wow. Oh, absolutely. But wow. I mean, it's still, and again, it's my opinion, but I just think that again, the screens and the devices and, you know, the TikTok and no matter how much you live, you know, you limit it. It's still, like I said, it's now so ubiquitous in culture. Again, they're homeschooled. You know, they never had a V put in them so that, you know, we're in California and they can't go anywhere. You know, it, you know, I'm very open about this. So it's Good like, for you. Good for you. but I mean, like I've always known, right. And there are a lot of us that do know this stuff, but it's like, you know, some of it is difficult for me because the 12 year old has even said to me, she's like, dad, if it was up to me, I'd go get the shots right now. Cause I just want to go to school and be around them. And I'm like, well, thankfully it's not up to you. You know, we have those conversations you know she's not there yet but you know it, it, it's interesting i mean i know you know this like you know as we as we live on this rock there is nothing easy it's uh, uh we're here in school to progress to graduate to whatever the next level is and obviously progression you know might take many times around the sun many lifetimes <laughs> you know, around yeah. the sun. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, but the last point that I want to go with you, and I think it's a fascinating one is from warrior to warrior. And I want to start it off by saying that my wife, Monica, who you are going to meet very soon, her mother is, uh, she's gone now, bless her soul, but she, uh, was a uh, first generation from Mexico. She was from Culiacan and she married, you know, a tall white man in a suit. And she used to tell Monica, she says, Monica, if you care, you worry. And that was the conquistadors. Wow. There's, there's, some, there's some words of wisdom. If you care, you the, worry. Oh, my God. But that's the conquistadors brainwashing the Mexican people with the Catholic, you know, bullshit, the Inquisition, all that stuff in, you know, the 14th, 13th, 13th, 14th, 15th centuries. And then that trauma, mind control, programming, indoctrination, whatever you want to call it, filtering all the way up into today. And as you know, and I wanted to save this point for the last one, because I really want your comment on this and your opinion on this. But I mean, dude, I still look at the true levers of their control as religion and politics. And, you know, pulling people out of Abrahamic religious teachings, which, as you know, are so corrupted and co-opted and hijacked. And yes, there's precepts in there of great spiritual uh, power. But, you know, again, you know, the average person can't, discern it, yeah exactly so it's like it's it's just it's so incredible but you know your comment or, or your your thoughts on that comment again from warrior to warrior when you have this stacking of worry it creates electrically a field doesn't it somebody's right. in a state of worry they're emanating you can feel it you can walk into houses Horrible. you can walk into places and you feel wow this you probably done it as a kid you didn't even know what was going on you go to your friend's house and all of a sudden like this place is thick ear eerie and thick like odd my house isn't like this this one's right. something something's different that's Bad. 
you're you're aware yeah your consciousness can determine that there's a big energetic shift there a magnetic flux that's changed yeah. so when you're in that state all the time of worry everybody's unifying though they're resonating there so to get out of that field you need to be a warrior because you're going through you're going through hell you're going to you're going to have to commit and discipline yourself at a very deep level to not be pulled into that darkness. Right. And what what do you do? Well, you need to, you know, you need to be on the ground. You need to be in front of the sun. You need to be in nature. You need to be drinking clean water. You need to be eating correctly for your situation at the right time. You need to be spending time alone and creating. You need to understand, you need to put your attention on creating the future. You need to you need to really discipline to get to the altitude where it's free sailing because you're not in it there. You're in the storm because it's a collective field and it's very strong and it's pulling you all day into that field. So to be, to come out of that, don't identify what's wrong with the field and don't judge the field. We already know it is what it is. The, the solution is the lifestyle. You need to take consist consistent action in all those things that bring you joy and peace and well-being and vitality. So you're consciously designing your lifestyle every step of the way. And if you're not, you will get sucked into that riptide. It will pull you out. It's just the way it is. So you're going to understand that a five-minute meditation won't cut it. And having a salad, oh, I ate a salad today. It won't cut it. And I went to the gym this week. It won't cut it. I'm sorry. Right. Or I'm a vegan. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You right? had to say vegan on my show. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have like, them edit that out. Or or you're or or you're a or you're a meat eater, a carnivore. It doesn't matter. You know, you're we're multidimensional beings, right? There's that's like right. 12 pieces to us, and you're that's saying right. I got one of them mastered. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. But part of the the true intelligence is to know what to do and when to do it. Right. Eating that way may be excellent in that cycle and that time for you. And it may be what's needed for you. That's your intuition guiding right. you, the intelligence right. of life. Right. Do it. And, but no one to take your foot off the gas and put it on the brake and change direction. That's, That's intelligence. Right. Getting religious about one thing. Unidirectional is not the answer because you're a multidimensional being. So you're going to have to look at your life like there's many parts to me. Am I fulfilling all of them at once? Not like I'm going to be a vegan for six months and then, then I'm going to switch to carnivore. Then I'm going to be this religion. Then I'm going to exercise. And then I'm going to know I'm going to stop exercising because weights are no good. I'm going to be a yoga instructor. All of that is inconsequential because of this multidimensional potential right. that you have, right? Right. Beautiful, Does that make man. sense? Or No, 100%, 100%. I mean, it's funny because – it's really, you know, part and parcel to the distraction of society today, right? Like so many people, you know, consider themselves or have maybe even were diagnosed, you know, or labeled as ADHD, you know, ADHD or ADD or all this. But in reality, we are in this quantum realm of life, of experiences, of information. And it's like, how do we take it all in and at the same time, like recognize what's important, what isn't. And I think people who are consciously aware for by and large, for the most part, do know how to discern. And I personally believe now that discernment is a lost art. And it's also, as you know, due to this, I mean, Brooks, why would a young person? And again, I've had them say this to me. Why would a young person work on their critical thinking skills and discernment when the answer is instantly asked for and granted? Now, again, they don't have the discernment and the critical thinking to realize that the answer is hijacked and not real, but it's a great question. You know, if I'm, you know, devil's advocate and I'm looking at things from their perspective. And so it's interesting to see how they have shifted the balance of power. And I really do think that like, that whole idea, you know, I, another one is good good for you and me is like, we talk about the Dewey Decimal System in the card catalog and the work that we had to do, right, to actually learn. Whereas now, hey Siri, 
hey alexa hey google right. and it's just regurgitation instant gratification but what do you learn you learn nothing at the end of the day at are. the end of the day yeah at the end of the day i used to be puzzled i mean when i got into studying like chinese medicine in my teens i was like yeah you know they would always say things like you know the answer is in nature and you'd hear these right. things you know I mean, you can't right. just you can't put it together but you keep hearing it for four decades and the answer is in nature you just don't know that language though no one's right. really broken down the energy to me the language right. of energy that's of kind of my skill set is i can put energy into a language now i can do i can show you there's subdivisions and order there and if it's right. presented the right way you'll go that makes wow. sense and right. when you look at nature the answer is going to be accelerated when you're in nature because that's a that's right. true intelligence that's right the, that's sun comes, the field exactly. of nature and energy is god that is Ex source energy. exactly exactly it's so so the more that you're in source the more that you're going to have intelligence that's your fundamental feed of even nourishment. Most people, if you said like, what's the best source of nourishment? They'd probably say, well, eating more green vegetables and there'd be a war from a, a keto guy and a carnivore to a vegan. It'd all be salmon, worrying about salmon and broccoli, bro. Come on. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So when you go, it's actually sun, air, and water are 80% right. of the nourishment to soul. Right at all levels because we're actually light beings you need some mass and molecular structure of course of course that's but we're missing the real nourishment and and it's nourishing at all levels and we're not talking right. we're talking about nourishing not nutrition right right still with right. nutrition you have to eat it digest it assimilate it and eliminate it if you can't do that no matter how many green organic salads you're eating if you can't digest that it's absolutely useless to you so there's so many conversations to be had in there, but in, in essence, nature is the answer to most of the problems. Just aligning yourself with nature in some fluid repetitive matter of being outside, being on the ground, breathing, walking, that'll take away 50% of the ills of people. That's exactly right. Except I mean, look, it's man, very simple. I, I, when I was, when Monica and, and, you know, I'll share this with you in person soon, but like when Monica and I went to Peru in 2019, we made a ceremony on Lake Titicaca with an indigenous guide, uh, Chuck one and two other people. And, you know, people were like, Oh bro, you, was it, was it a, you know, a plant medicine ceremony? No, it was literally the, you know, the, what is it? The leaf, the indigenous leaf of uh, that part of the Andes. And, you know, he just made ceremony on the lake, but Lake Titicaca, you know, I don't have to tell you this, you know, this, but it came alive. And it kissed us. And all of us felt this like energy field of love, of just pure love wash over our bodies. And all four of us and the guide spontaneously started crying. Now, I tell you this story because it was at that moment for the first time in my life, I truly realized or recognized and more, it was more of a vibrational feeling that the lake, Mother Earth, Gaia, the energy of that experience was source. And it was also at that moment that I, you know, consciously made a decision moving forward that like everything was alive, everything was sentient, everything was conscious. And they were right. all here sharing, you know, this space, this earthen space, and that you had to have that respect for everything. And, you know, the indigenous of Mesoamerica, the Andes, you know, they call it Ani, which is divine reciprocity. Everything is worthy and deserving of the equal and opposite energy. So again, you're not stepping on spiders. You're not littering, right? You know, you're, you're literally respectful from a divine reverence standpoint of everything and anything. And so I have lived my life since that moment in that way. And again, there's just been nothing. All I've experienced is just more and more residents. Right. More yeah. and more joy too, as a result. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you know, it's funny you say that because I always tell people, you got to understand the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is a transient experience. Joy is a state of being. Right. Exactly. And it's a choice to be in joy. Happiness is not a choice because you, as you know, you're living every day and you're going to be happy for things. You're going to have amazing sex and you're going to be happy and you're going to have yeah. something that's going to happen to you. And you're going to be like, wow, but so that's a good a state. Excellent distinction because most people 
most people will be distracted by the thought that I just want to be happy, but the happy is turning into what pleasure sensation are you going after? So you're saying I, if I do something destructive, but feel happy, that's, that's worthy right. of my goal, which is true in that state of consciousness. Cause you're, right. you don't have the distinction you know, that, that you're left on the downside of that cycle. Exactly. too. If there's an upside of the cycle, you know, there's right. a downside because it's artificially created. Right. When you're living in a state of joy, you've self manufactured right. that through consciousness and intention and attention. So you're the creator again, we would say no to be knowingly, knowingly cause and willingly affect. Right. I am projecting and willing to receive what it is I put into this world right. with complete responsibility, good, bad, and indifferent. And when you're there, you can rest because I know I'm putting my mind on the right, right. thing. I'm putting my intention on the right thing. I'm putting my emotion on the right thing. I'm putting my energy into the right thing, investing in the right people in the right circumstances. So I know what's going to be delivered to me. I'm conscious of my creation. So that's, it, um, that, that's the place for me. The, if there's another I mean, way. I'm, the place for I'm, anyone in residence. I mean, that can summarize the everything about everything is like, are you in conscious creation or in unconscious creation? And the right. majority of people are in unconscious creation. And as you said, many times in this podcast, when you're an unconscious creation, you are creating reverberations and ripples it, that affect right, negatively dis, everyone. They're disharmonic. It's a, the quantically. There's three fundamental things, right? There's 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 resonance, harmony, and equilibrium. Three right. states. Right. Those are the three basic states you need to create to have some kind of alignment and have, let's say, your let's say the intelligence of life just drop through. Right. Whether it's intuition or you didn't know something and all of a sudden you go, I don't know how to fix an air conditioner. And you go, I do now. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Then you can't explain those. And when you have enough of them, you go, I'm not afraid to be challenged by anything because intelligence is going to drop through. I just have to create the environment for it to come through me. Okay. And I know what that takes. So I'm going to obviously play that, that, that game. The, the more beautiful, the more you, the more you spend time in stillness, the more easier it is to access that higher fields of information so that when you're having those conversations, like you said, where you have no background or technical uh, expertise or proficiency in a subject matter and you start talking about that subject matter and you literally sound like, you know, Walter Russell in discussing it, you're literally like, okay, cool. So now I know how to tap this field when I need it. So I can access this field whenever necessary, but I have to, as you said, at the very beginning of the podcast, I have to do the inner work. So again, it's practice makes perfect. So it's the constant will and intention of bettering yourself through that work, which is an inside job of, you know, whatever contemplation, meditation, grounding in nature, just again, reaching stillness. Stillness is where everything is allowed to be experienced as a conscious sold being. That's where yeah, it comes. There, exactly. There was something I learned probably, wow, it'd be, yeah, it'd be about 40 years to the day. And it was spirit looks for reciprocating, reciprocating forms of beauty to express itself through. Right. So if right. you can, if you can create that resonance and coherence in yourself through attention and attention, you have to be used as a channel because right. you are it and it is you. So You're you don't have to, at that point. right. Yeah. You don't have to try to do anything. You only have to put your attention and intention on something and you'll watch that intelligence of life come through you and making decisions is becomes easy. And most people are struggling with decision-making because they can't make a simple distinction of is your decision going to help you ascend or descend? That's all. If you start with the most basic principle, will what you're going to do or think help you rise or sink? That's all. And then you yeah. can see a little bit of clarity from the confusion of the mind because it's it's a storm inside people right now. They can't make they're a decision. Monkey, they're drunk monkey. They're drunk monkey. They're drunk monkey. Exactly. Exactly. And then they, they can't make a decision. Then the fear builds and multiplies and they're stuck and they call it depression. But I mean, it's not a, it's not a stretch to, to uh, uh, slow that one down. You have a little bit I mean, of I'll put your website up here. Uh, but you know, just closing thoughts. You know, we're we're again, as we said in the very beginning, but we are in very interesting times. And, and your, you know, intention and attention determines whether we're in the greatest of times with the greatest of opportunities or the worst of times where you're locked up in autonomic 
you know, central nervous system drip of fear, 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 right. fear, fear, can't get out. So again, it's a choice. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, again, I just say this, you know, it's because it's like conscious of me when I go out in public, wherever I am in the world now, you see the people wearing their masks. I mean, again, I was in Los Angeles County yesterday, which thank God I don't live there anymore. You know, I'm in the hills down here in Marietta, 1800 feet with San Diego weather and blue sky every day. And, you know, temperature is unbelievable. But like you go into the big city and there are the people walking around in their masks, bro. And, and, yeah, and don't have got to have compassion for them. Right. Though, because right. for me, it used to be like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, I want to walk up to them and say, hey, you know, you don't need to wear your mask. You're in the bright sunlight. Right. But you realize that that's their choice. You know, again, yeah. they've chosen dissonance, you know, incoherence, but it's OK. Right. And, and yeah. the hardest part is uh, it, that acceptance of allowing them to express that vibration of, of dissonance and fear and incoherence and being cool with it. Because, you know, I didn't say this to you at the beginning. You had mentioned it in another way. But, you know, the great Dr. David Hawkins said everything is happening exactly as it is divinely intended. Right. And if we disbelieve that, that's our resistance to what to is the right. to what is. Don't fight what is. I mean, it's, that's a, that's 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 easy, isn't it? Why resist Beautiful. what is? Beautiful. What is? Yeah, that's it. That's what God. You know, what is is God. I mean, universe of you know higher order source creation. You know that energy and frequency of divinity. And yeah, you can't resist it. It is just uh, that it is this that is the Sanskrit meaning of ether. It is what it is. Right. And it's a it's a basically the first measurable form of energy in the universe. That's it all starts quantically there. And they, they can't describe it, so they they're trying to say this is the smallest thing we can measure, the beginning impulse of creation. What is it? It is what it is. I mean, what else can you label it? It hasn't formed into anything yet, it hasn't it grouped to create structure or form yet. It's before the form. It's just what it is. It's like one of those days. How's it going? Ah, eh, this is what it is. You know, like, do I want to judge and say it's a shitty day or a good day? But it is what it is. Right? I want to, like, I want to stay neutral here. I don't want to get polarized and, right? That is the place yeah. of the neutral observation platform. Hey, man, it is what it is. It is what it is, right? Jeez. Whether it's up, I mean, you could perceive it up good and bad, but it's better than to say, hey, I'm always in the state of joy. Whatever happens, I'm still happy. You know, it's funny you said that because it seems like we can't end this podcast because I want to make another point. I want your opinion on it. But like, you know, that's why the Easterns are kind of screwed up, really, because, you know, they want to kill desire. And it's like, why? We, you came to be in a human body in this avatar being to experience the, you know, objects, whether it's material things or love or, you know, whatever, attention and intention. So why would you want to kill that? Right. So it's like, I, I don't think that they don't have great ideas. Right. I mean, obviously, but like that whole, you know, desire to kill desire, like why the fuck would you want to do that? Well, that's an excellent point. And that video you sent me, you sent me that link earlier. They were actually talking about that. And a lot of people go, just beam me up off this rock. I'm tired of it. Right. It's like, I, my question is, do you think it's going to be easier where you're going? Right. If you're truly enlightened or more advanced and aware, do right. you think when you go to the next level, you'll be a layabout? You'll be able to lay around on the couch all day and look at videos? It's not going to be Bro, that way. My, my wife always says, you take you with you. <laughs> wherever, wherever you go. Wherever you go. Exactly. Right? <laughs> So it's like, well, right, I, enjoy, enjoy this, enjoy this place. Enjoy really, you should love it because this is as easy as it gets. I agree. And if, it's, and if, if this I is agree. really struggle for you, you got to do some work. But otherwise, that, this is a, a beautiful place. It's as easy as it's going to be on your spiritual evolution. So love it until you get to go on to the next level. Bro, that's it. It's about graduation. However long it takes you to graduate. Everybody's walking the same path, you know, back right. to course. No rate of speed is better than another. You're right. That's you know, right. Remember, exactly. the, remember the Nissan commercial, enjoy the ride. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's really, that's really what it comes down to. And you're right. If you're not enjoying the ride, then make, make some changes to who you are as a being. It's very simple. You know, a, you don't have to stay attached to whatever it is that can controls you negatively. Right. 
right? Is it, that's something funny you bring it up as a song. It's true. It just triggered the an old, old song by a band, Fog Hat, Slow Ride. You listen to the lyrics Slow and you're like, no, take it easy. Take it easy. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, Slow Ride, take it easy. I'm in the mood. But 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 perfect. Just to relax and enjoy this. Just make the make the most of this incarnation, right, please. Yeah. It's, a, it's right. a blessing to be here at this particular time. You're getting tested all the time. Figure it out and ascend. Brother, man, I'm grateful, truly honored to have you on my podcast here today. Obviously, guys, brooksbrawn.com. Um, final thoughts, really, from you. But, you know, if, if somebody watches this and they want to reach out to you and connect with you and you know, maybe do a podcast with you or talk to you, what is the best way they can do that? That's right there. That's as deep as there I go. My, my, you'll have my email at the bottom. That's yep. my, my whole campaign there. Yep. The, depth, so, the depth of me is an email. No, but honestly, brother, again, I'm grateful. So guys and gals, please support the amazing people that come on the podcast. I mean, Brooks is a different cat, different level dude. So I'm grateful to have him here today. So I will actually be seeing him in person very soon. And I will just say to everyone, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.